Hi, it's me again. So today I thought I'd try to show people how to upload the firmware to the GTEC printers that have the GT2560 version 4 board. And you know you have a version 4 board if you have an A10T or A20T. Those all came with the version 4 board and A10, A10M, A20M uh, the pro versions come with GT uh, the version 4 board and I think some of the newer models of the A I, I, I'm not sure if there are the newer models are all coming out with the version 4 board or not but you can tell if it has the if your printer has the TFT card or the micro SD card instead of the standard size SD card or in the case of the A10T, it has both, but it has the uh, micro SD right now, right next to the USB port. So if it has the micro SD card, it's a version 4 board. And what's happening is there's a problem on the hardware that won't accept firmware because any program we use to upload firmware, like whether it be Cure or some other slicer that has the option of updating firmware, or Arduino or Platform IO with you know VS Code or Atom or whatever, when that program is told to tries to start to upload firmware, it does a reset on the printer, and there's a little little uh, in order to start accepting the firmware. Uh, there's a little way around that. It's supposed to uh, send a reset pulse, but the hardware won't accept it. So, the way around that, um, if you're going to use a pre-compiled hex file, you can use Cur to update. And what we have to do is go to Manage Printers, Update Firmware, and then Upload Custom Firmware. Once you browse to where you keep your your hex file, the pre-compiled firmware. I'm going to go to one that I've already compiled myself here. When you get to this point, select your firmware file and stop. Don't click open yet. What we have to do, you, your printer is already connected and it is uh, ready to start the upload it's connected USB it's turned on and ready to go what we're gonna do we have this file selected we're gonna reach over and press and hold the reset button on the printer and we're gonna position our mouse right over the open button what's gonna happen is you have to release that reset button at pretty much exactly the same time as you press this open button or release the reset button ever so slightly before pressing this open button like you know <laughs> it's gonna be pretty closely timed and you might miss a couple of times um, but this is the process we have to do I'm just gonna do it to see if I can get the timing right I'm holding my reset button and we're going to release and click this button pretty much at the same time. It says it's updating. Yes, I did. Okay, I got the timing right. So it's actually updating the firmware. I released my button just at the right time in comparison to clicking the open button. Um, this might take you a couple of times to get the timing right. Um, if you don't, it's going to come up on this bar and say that you the firmware update failed. You're going to have to close everything. You have to close Cura completely. And then restart it and try the process over again. What's going to happen is if this fails, your upload custom firmware button will disappear. So you have to close Cura, start it back up again, and try again. Okay, it says we've completed. Close. Alright, I'm going to just show you what happens here. 
if I don't get the timing right or if I don't hold the button at all press this says updating okay that's the error you get when it doesn't work firmware up there failed due to a communication error so that's what happens if you don't get the timing right releasing the reset button and clicking that open button at the same time um, and like I say in order to do this again you have to close this out close Cura and start it back up again and try again but that's the process there so we're gonna just close Cura and go over to Arduino can see on Arduino I've already gone ahead and clicked verify uh, so it compiled it still takes a while during this process so I'm gonna start I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the upload button what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through its compiling thing there'll be a green bar over here progressing and you need to pay pretty close attention what's gonna happen is down here after it's uh, been compiling a while, it's gonna, this all this output is going to pause, and it's going to have a line that says linking everything together. Oh, it's right there. It's going to do the same thing after you've clicked upload. Once it gets to that line, that's when you need to press and hold the reset button on the printer, and then you have to watch this screen pretty intently just as soon as there's any more movement any flash of of more lines here that's when you let go of the reset button <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on upload it takes a couple minutes so I'll clip a little bit out of the video so you don't have to sit here and watch it compile and then I'll uh, attempt to show you where the line is so you'll know what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the upload and I'll be back in a second when it gets to when it gets to the point we need to pay attention and watch the screen. Okay here it comes linking everything together you know, just as soon as there's any more movement here, we have to let go of the reset button. You gotta watch this very closely. And there. Okay. I got the timing right. I res let go of the reset button just as soon as I saw any more movement in the scripting or the, uh, the output here. And you can see down here, it says it's writing the firmware. So it has connected to the printer and was successful in uh, starting the upload. If it had not worked, you would have gotten uh, the STK ABR Dude 500, whatever STK 500 ABR Dude communication error or timeout, and it would have failed. At which point, you just go ahead and click the upload button again and try the process over again. So there, we're done. We managed to uh, to flash the firmware. But that's the process, and that process in platform IO with VS Code will be the same. Uh, basically, I'm not sure if the line really is. Uh, let's see if we can scroll back up where the pause was, where it says uh, linking everything together right there. That's where the, the pause was. I think it says the same thing in platform IO. Platform IO. I don't remember. But it's something like that. It'll do the same thing. It'll pause. And then just as that's when you press and hold the reset button. And it's a few seconds, like five or six seconds later, you're going to start seeing the script moving again. Just as soon as you see that screen start to flash again, you have to let go of that reset button right then. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Um, luckily, most people aren't reflashing their firmware quite as often as I do for testing different things um, so you shouldn't have to put up with this uh, too much that's the process hope that helps you out uh, explaining why you're having troubles uploading your 
firmware to the GT2560 version 4 board. Have fun with that. Catch you later.